Welcome to the hour show once again on Ali TV. Today, I'm not in a very good mood because a very good man I met in Ghana, major reader, has passed on. It is quite a shock that all of this is happening all at once. I met major reader in Ghana. He was sincere and very genuine in all his submissions during my interview. He is an honest man. But today, he is no more. My sincere condolence goes to the family and friends of Major Reader. But this is a snippet of an audio that could have foiled the coup of 1979 and redeem Ghana to probably a better position than where it is now. And many, many people that are grieved could have been probably released or relieved from their pain and sorrow. This is it. Fellow countrymen, I'm here speaking on behalf of the SMC and all loyal troops of the armed forces and all loyal Ghanaians. The uprising has been quelled. The friendly forces are now in the broadcasting house. Five battalions has been taken and attempts have been made to round up all deserters. All previous announcements are now ineffective. It is a plea to all of you to go back to your work and to leave the rest to the armed forces to sort out. Thank you. Thank you all for giving us a little bit of audience and paying our last respect to Major Reader. But today I sit here with a noble woman, an activist, an author of a book, A Piece of Cake. That is a story. All the way from Uganda, Africa, and also a close friend and ally of the opposition leader of Ugandan uh, political party, Bobby Wine. I sit here with Patricia Sewongo. Welcome, Patricia. Hi, Andre. How are you? I'm good, how are you? Good. I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. Yeah. I see all the red cap, the t-shirt, the sneakers. I mean, it's all red. Yeah. It's Uganda bleeding. Uganda has been bleeding for the past 35 years mm. because somebody can do mental slavery mm. or somebody can confuse you when you don't know understand because if you realize uganda had been there, there was war mm -hmm. between the president Ada amin and president and obote too mm -hmm. ugandans were dying so when president was came in 1986 mm -hmm. it seemed like um a hero he seemed like a hero but he used that against ugandans because ugandans were gullible and a little bit naive they thought that he had brought peace mm -hmm. and there is that narrative that has been said for so many years mm -hmm. At least we can sleep. Mm -hmm. But as we kept on sleeping, mm -hmm. they were stealing everything, mm -hmm. right from privatization of yeah. selling all Uganda's important things like the airport, the banks, name it, even the very good schools were right. all privatized. Mm -hmm. So people didn't realize because they trusted President Seven so much mm -hmm. and they didn't realize that now they're just waking up mm -hmm. and realize that, wait a minute, actually, mm -hmm. We've been bleeding for a very long time. Mm. And this is why, if you realize or oh, speak to Ugandans, they're going to say that actually, uh, Idi Amin was much better than in Seven years. Now they're doing comparison. Really? Yeah. Idi Amin is better than Museveni. When you look into, when you go through the history of Uganda, right. you're going to realize that right. there is a, a, a lot, because President Idi Amin, when you see the videos, he mm. loved Uganda so much. Mm -hmm. It's on record. Mm. He was speaking to the British and he said, I do not have a private um, bank account in any country. He didn't mm. have any show account mm. anywhere. Mm -hmm. He said the money, I, that everything belongs to Uganda. Mm. It is my country. Mm -hmm. He chased away the Indians in 1979. Mm -hmm. He decided that, look, I don't understand why foreigners come in here, mm -hmm. take my, my people's jobs, mm -hmm take the houses. Mm -hmm. No, they should go back to where they come from mm -hmm. so that Ugandans enjoy the country. There's so many buildings. Idi Amin is part of the Makari University. Makari University was one of the best universities in East Africa. Today it's in shambles. The Bugolobi floods that Idi Amin was part of it. There's so many things, the airport, everything, because um, the, the, um, the Kabaka mm -hmm. left, that was the king. Mm -hmm. Then Obote came in, mm -hmm. and Obote worked and used to work in the UK. Mm -hmm. Then he came back to Uganda, mm -hmm. and he bought a lot with very little money. Mm -hmm. You can realize that they built, Museveni has come and sold off everything, including the Uganda embassy. 
The embers is sold? He, he, he has sold it in parts. How do you mean? If we don't have a, a Ugandan embassy, if you go there now, right. there is a Congo embassy, there is blah, blah, and they're not renting. If you go to Uganda embassy today at the Trafalgar Square, you're going to spend a whole week trying to chase Ugandan and the ambassador and everybody. Nobody's there. Not because of the COVID-19. No. We only have a small part just like this video. Are you saying that Museveni was a mistake for Ugandans? Big time. Big time. And the unfortunate bit of it all is people did not realize. They gave him the benefit of the trial. They, right. they gave him the, all their trust. Ugandans gave him seven food in 1985. Okay. Before he, he um, captured mm. power mm. because he used the gun. Mm. He has been shown on TV, on record, mm. him saying that we are the masters of violence. <laughs> and he says proudly, mm. his minister Otafine has said it, mm. his minister Eli Tumine has said it. Mm. They all say that we are not going to let these young boys come. Mm. Even yesterday, mm. he was on TV and he said that, look, we're not giving power to these people because we did not fight for free. But they fought in 1985. Okay. And then they took power in 1986. Mm -hmm. We cannot be paying mm -hmm. until 35 years. They've paid themselves long enough. Okay. Yeah. Now, Bobby Wine is the is the new dawn, is the rising star. Yeah. Or probably the rising star already, I believe, mm -hmm. in Uganda. Now he was, he is a musician or was a musician, not a member of parliament. Mm. And his idea is to bring the ghetto to the, to the government. Yeah. yeah. How is he achieving that? Bobby Wine has been singing entertainment, okay. whatever they call it, for so many years. Initially, he started singing that bend over and those, mm. you know, those kind of things. Yeah. He realized that no, there is something not right here. Well, how come the government? doesn't celebrate the ghetto. Okay. The children of the ghetto were everywhere because mm. they're all a mess, unfortunately. Mm. Mm. Then he realized that there is a loophole. Mm. I can sing and make, use my music to speak mm. to the government or mm. to speak to the people and give them hope. Mm. You see, he sang a song called um, To Gambire Ku Jennifer. Jennifer was like the minister of Kampala. Mm. Kampala is the capital city of Uganda. Okay. And what he was trying to say that, look, you're chasing away the vendors. Mm -hmm. Of course, the capital city must not have vendors. Mm -hmm. But then the government must provide markets for mm -hmm. these people to go. Mm -hmm. But throwing them away doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. Or putting them in a market which they cannot afford. For example, mm -hmm. somebody's got a basket of, mm -hmm. of um, mangoes. Mm -hmm. Those mangoes are about two pounds. Mm -hmm. And then you expect them to, to buy a stall mm -hmm. of 50 pounds. Okay. Does it make sense? It doesn't. It doesn't make sense. Right. So they were throwing them in markets which right. they couldn't afford. And they were saying that, no, Ugandans are hardworking people. Right. And we do not want to feed, because in Uganda there are no benefits, and mm -hmm. we do not want to be street thieves. Mm -hmm. Get us somewhere we can work from. And they don't do that. Because mm -hmm. in Uganda everything is all a mess. Mm -hmm. The government doesn't realize that mm -hmm. people need to work. Mm -hmm. The government doesn't realize that they can create jobs for people. Mm -hmm. People have decided to create the jobs for themselves, and the mm -hmm. government does not support them. Mm -hmm. So Bobby Wine started singing such songs. Mm -hmm. After a very long time, he realized that, wait a minute, mm -hmm. they don't seem to hear it. Mm -hmm. I need to go into the parliament and speak louder, because sometimes somebody needs to raise their voices on top of their voice on their head, mm -hmm. so that somebody can hear what you're right. trying to say. So he contested as Chadondo East MP, mm -hmm. and he won it 80% landslide. It was mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. He went into the parliament, and the time he got into parliament, that's when they were trying to contest of um, changing the, the, the constitution of mm -hmm. Uganda, yeah. because the constitution of Uganda clearly stipulates that the president should not be 75 and above. Yeah. Right. So he was like, no. <laughs> he came up with this idea. Somebody called my Jersey, turned up and brought a bill. That actually, there was nothing wrong with it. We should change the age limit. So Bobby Wine came into the whole saga of opposition saying, no, do not touch the, the constitution. Don't change it. One zero one one or two B, which says that he must be 75 
and, and below. Yeah. Then the, op- the the government, of course, and his parliament were saying, no, mm-hmm. let's change it. Okay. Because number one, it favors also the MPs mm-hmm. to an extent. Mm-hmm. So Bobby One comes into the saga and guess what? He's on the table. There was a big fight. Then they brought in the army and they beat up everybody. Mm-hmm. And of course, mm-hmm. because the, the government in power has got more mm-hmm. MPs mm-hmm. in parliament. Mm-hmm. So they won. And this is why we're having this conversation. Otherwise, if it wasn't for that, who would be now a new government? So, so, so um, Bobby Wine is just fighting for the presidential, the constitution that governs the presidential or presidency in Uganda, or even more than that. Bobby Wine is fighting for a poor Ugandan mm-hmm. who is in the hospital, Mulago, mm-hmm. who cannot afford paracetamol, mm-hmm. then dies mm-hmm. in broad daylight or mm-hmm. in cold blood. Mm-hmm. Bobby Wine is fighting for that young boy and girl who has been to school, mm-hmm. finished university, and cannot afford a job, mm-hmm. and ends up in Oman mm-hmm. to work as a house girl. Okay. Bobby Wine is fighting for that poor mother. Mm-hmm. Uganda, I must say, Uganda loses 18 mothers on a single day basis, simply because they cannot afford razor bread, simply because they cannot afford blood, simply because they cannot afford paracetamol and painkillers as they have in their children. So Bobby Wine stands for that. Bobby Wine stands for the poor Ugandan mm-hmm. who has no food. Mm-hmm. If you look on Ubus, mm-hmm. you'll see 60% of Ugandans have no jobs. Is he the only political opposition leader in, in Uganda? No, we have a lot of political leaders, but of course, like it is, there's some people who come, mm-hmm. take their time, yeah. and then leave mm-hmm. for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. Because uh, Semo Gerere, he's the DP, which was my ch- my childhood party. Mm-hmm. He's too old. He's mm-hmm. given up, mm-hmm. and they sit on the back and saying, "Okay, you young boy, take over." Mm-hmm. Then we had uh, FBC, mm-hmm. who is uh, who was with. Um, Dr. Chiza mm, mm. he, he tried to contest for 20 years, which mm. was four times, right. and he failed. Yeah. But my point is, Patricia, mm. my, my question is, why is Bobby Wine always getting in trouble with Mussolini? Why? If, if he's not the only political it is opposition leader. Right. This is, this is probably, I don't know how sure it is, mm. but it looks like to me, mm. and these are my personal words, mm. All the opposition that has been there mm. has been nonsense because mm. Museveni is a dictator. Okay. He copped Mach- Machiavelli. Mm. He works, he creates his own opposition okay. to show that he has democracy. All right. So all the people who have been coming, they've been selling us nonsense. They've been trying to fight for us and they do not want us to fight for ourselves. Mm. So Bobby Wayne comes and says the power belongs to the people. And that is in our constitution. Is Bobby Wine is, 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 is Bobby Wine a troublemaker? Is he a troublemaker? I've seen various videos, and although he has a lot of followers, I'm sure about eighty percent of the population of of Uganda follow him. And wherever his mot- motorcade is, is the, you know where, where probably I've seen two or three videos where he kind of conflicts with the president with his own motorcade on the same road. Was that intentional or is that intentional? This is on record and I want to look into the camera and say it very clearly. Mm. I have watched everything that is happening in Uganda. Mm. Bobby Wayne has never confronted the president. He has never, there has never been a time. We're talking about um, 2018 when his driver was killed. He's mm-hmm. in Kaoma, rest in peace. When they lied mm-hmm. that Bobby Wayne's people hit stones. Mm-hmm on President Museveni's car and and broke the window. That car is not the sort of car that you can use a stone to hit and break. They had fake guns. We don't know where they disappeared. Everything disappeared in thin air. Because Bobby Wine was put into um, into prison and he was supposed to go for treason. Everything disappeared, quacha quacha, chap chap, and nobody saw it again. And this is these are all lies. They just want to lie. Bobby Wine has not confronted the president at all. Right now, we are doing our campaigns because on the 14th of January is an election day. Mm -hmm. Bobby Wine has got his plan, Mm -hmm. which is given to the police Mm -hmm. to approve. Mm -hmm. 
Museveni has his plan, mm. which he gives to the police mm. to approve. Mm. Rather, actually, mm. Obi Wan chose to mm. go into these districts before, mm. and the president wants to go there after. None of our business. But the problem is they're not even allowing Bobby Wayne to protest, uh, to, to campaign. Right. His boys are killed. So many people have died so far. Right. Since the campaign started. Right. People are beaten blue black. Last night they slept on the streets. It's just a whole lot of mess. He refused police protection and yet complains about killings. Why is that? Why does Bobby Wayne not want the police protection? Bobby, when um, in, in Uganda, mm. when somebody is a, a presidential candidate, mm. they pay 30 million right. and they're given a police uh, mm. protection. Mm -hmm. And Bobby Wine's protection moves with him everywhere. Mm -hmm. He has never refused. Okay. He just said that they use this mm. because they cannot even protect him. Because the day of the nomination, mm. Bobby Wine was almost arrested. He was spread with um, tear gas everywhere so he said this is even useless because they're not even protecting me rather they're spies but he didn't particularly he was just making a statement okay. but he didn't say that he doesn't want it because he has no choice right. he has to move with him and they move with him okay. and one of the police um policemen that he was given a young kato he was hit by the updf how are you protecting bobby wine now how is he going to be protected is a movement which cannot be just fought with just mouth when you're actually being attacked with guns. And in 1952, right. Kwame Nkrumah yeah. decided to start a movement yeah. at the Gold Coast mm -hmm. against all odds. Mm. Nobody mm -hmm. has ever won the power of the people. Mm -hmm. The people are going to protect Bobby Wayne. Wow. Well. Let's take a quick break and when we come back, we talk more. Maintaining a presence at the forefront of a global issue with the desire to help others come to a resolve in personal and business affairs is why Andy D. Legal and Immigration Associate was established. We specialize in overseas British passport applications, bills and temporary admission, deportation and detention cases. The profound pattern in achieving positive results with fragile cases in immigration nationality, European Union and human rights law, adoption, marriage, divorce, litigation and so on up to date has been broken and that is why our client base continues to expand. We also do representations at the UK border agencies and overseas consulate, human rights law and settlement and leave to remain applications. We have the right keys to unlock any case across the spectrum of law locally in London and across the borders in Ghana where our other branches are established. We are located at 44 Broadway, Stratford, E15 1XH. Our telephone number is 0203-1300-751. So today I'm on a plot of land, not just a plot, a 40 acre plot of land around OEB Old Sasabi. It's between Ubuntu Heaven and Apollonia City of Light. This particular property has a good road, there's water, there's light. People have already bought this and they are putting up their structures. If you can see, so just call the numbers and get yours. Be your own landlord. Okay, so we just passed um, Car Junction. We're still going around the plot. As you can see to my left, that is open to heaven. Some have already gotten their plots and then have their buildings ongoing. There's light. As water as well, you wouldn't have problem with land mitigation and land guards and all that. As you can see, there are no land guards around. There's a good place to invest if you need a plot of land, or you can even buy two, three, four, and put up some businesses.
Kandi's natural mineral water comes with a natural thirst quenching relief. No wonder it leaves you yearning for more and more. Andy's natural mineral water. No more papa. Welcome back. Patricia, just uh, before the break, you enlightened me about Ghanaian history, political history, and mentioned Kwame Nkrumah. Um, but Bobby Wine reminds me of Nelson Mandela in his youthful years. What exactly are you guys doing in terms of international support? Because you know Museveni has been in power for over 36 years, isn't it? Um, but what exactly, what are you guys doing in terms of international relations? What are you doing? It's amazing because there is a saying in Uganda, but you won't understand it, so I won't use it. But you must understand that we were displayed. All right. Like myself, I have lived in the UK. Okay. Not by choice, but because I didn't have anything to do in Uganda. Okay. And as they displayed, most of us, mm. we have been to, to school, mm. we were very well educated, but mm. the world shared us around the world. Mm. Guess what? Mm. It's us who have been shared in the world mm. that are going to bring the change that Uganda needs. Mm. We have been writing, we have engaged mm. so many different people. Mm. And as we speak today, America has already put so many sanctions on so many politicians who are abusing human rights. Well, uh, yesterday, um, sorry, on uh, Thursday, I was at the World Bank okay. protesting. Okay. And we gave in our letter. Okay. We know exactly what's going on. We know what to do. Mm -hmm. You must understand. Mm. The British did this once to Putin. Mm. Putin was trying to make Wahala. Mm. And they did what did they do. They cut off certain things. A government that has been in power for 35 years, mm. they keep on saying that they brought a narrative of you want to bring the white man into our country, but they take loans from the white man. Mm. Why didn't they want us to speak to them? Mm. We've already spoken to them. Mm -hmm. We are doing a lot of lobbying, left, right, and center, mm. because we're so many. There's so many Ugandans in America, there's so many Ugandans in the UK, mm -hmm. there's so many Ugandans in France, right. everywhere. Right. And we have meetings, of course, that is not a story for me to tell on TV. Of course. But we're doing everything beyond our reach mm -hmm. to make sure that the president of Uganda leaves Uganda because he's done his time, mm -hmm. he's stolen quite enough. Mm -hmm. And it's now about time that the power comes back to Ugandans. Okay. Yeah. What is now the relationship between Bobby Wine and the Kenyan president? Um, like I said, there are certain things that I do not want to say, mm -hmm. but of course President Museveni has been causing trouble because remember, there is, mm -hmm. Kenya, mm -hmm. it's a, there, it has a cost. Mm -hmm. And President Museveni is one of those trouble people. Mm -hmm. He was causing the trouble between Mombasa and mm -hmm. I think Mogadishu. Mm -hmm. So everyone, Rwanda, they've had enough with him. They closed mm -hmm. the, the, the ports very recently and mm -hmm. airports mm -hmm. and people could not travel to Rwanda. The Kenya Mogofoli is also complaining. So everybody is complaining. But that is not something that I want to have a discussion here because when you're fighting your um like Bobby One keeps on saying, if you're fighting Babylon, you fight the Lava Dub style. Okay. You cannot tell what your enemy because for one is for armed. If you tell them what we're doing, mm -hmm. they use it again as that. Since everyone's very smart. Right. So he knows how to play his cards. Right. So this is not something that I want to air out here. Bob Wine was a musician, and most of Museveni's people have criticized him as inexperienced. What's your take on it? I want somebody to tell me where did uh, Trump get the experience from? Mm -hmm. And he's been a president for four years mm -hmm. to the United States of America. Mm -hmm. How is Bobby Wine going to get experience unless he becomes the president too? Mm -hmm. The government is not supposed to be run by the president. Mm -hmm. It's not a one-man show. Mm -hmm. The government has got um, sectors. Mm -hmm. It has ministers. Mm -hmm. It has the parliament. Mm -hmm. If only President Museven left the parliament do their job, mm -hmm. and the ministers do their job, mm -hmm. and everybody else, mm -hmm. Uganda would be a much better place. Mm -hmm. Museven is the one who sanctions and um, who commissioned such books? You know, mm. my book is, yeah. is the one is the one opening it. When uh, there is a 
uh, a supermarket being opened in the village, President Museveni is the one. If the selling of the, um, you know, Uganda's got now petrol, it's Museveni going into China to sign it with his wife and his brother. It is just about Museveni. And this is why it is so stuck on the fact that Bobby Wine has no experience. Bobby Wine has so many people. Uganda's got so many people who have been in, in, in politics, who are politicians, well educated, who are eloquent and well informed, who can run a government. Bobby Wine is just the president. Actually, the president is supposed to be an overseer. How is he going to oversee his ghetto people? The ghetto, let me tell you something. The ghetto of Uganda is very, very easy to transform. For so many years, I've lived in the UK for 21 years. Mm -hmm. There is the Red Nose Day. I'm sure you know the Red Nose Day. Of course, yeah. They give so much charity money to mm -hmm. Uganda every year. Okay, and why is that? From the ghetto. Okay. There is nothing that has ever happened in those ghettos. Okay. Ghetto people have got land. Right. The government can transform the ghetto. Okay. And create small things for those young boys and girls mm -hmm. and take them off the street okay. and create something for them to do. Mm -hmm. I have done so much charity with these young boys. They're human. Mm -hmm. They're real. Mm -hmm. When you engage them and speak to them, mm -hmm. it's just the world has pushed them there. Mm -hmm. They're desperate and they don't know what to do. Okay. So this is why they're there. Mm -hmm. I'll give you an example. Mm -hmm. If the government right. build flats mm -hmm. in those ghettos, mm -hmm and said we have a deal with the owner of the land. Mm -hmm. Bring the land, mm -hmm. we build flats, yeah. give them at a subsidized fee, right. and then the owner of the land can be a shareholder. Mm -hmm. the, the world will move, uh, Uganda will move at a quicker. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah. Somebody's going to say it's practically impossible. No, it is not impossible. If you see how much Entebbe Highway mm -hmm. Express, how mm -hmm. much money was used to build, mm -hmm. you'll understand that flats can be built in Uganda to remove all the ghettos. Mm -hmm. You'll understand. I've lived in Canada water for not a very long time. And where I live, a year they've built like six new buildings. Mm -hmm. Remember, Uganda's got even cheap level because mm -hmm. people don't have jobs. Mm -hmm. That means there's so many people who can't do it. In Uganda, we make our own bricks. Mm -hmm. We can, there is so much that we can use because of our natural resources. Mm -hmm. Uganda, there is nothing, anything like that. Mm. So Bobby Wine doesn't need to do so much mm. for the ghetto. Mm. He needs to sit down and say, fine, I'm taking the children off the streets. Mm -hmm. And how do I do that? Mm -hmm. He creates something for them. Mm -hmm. Uganda, there is, um, you know how car carpenters, mm -hmm. we can give these young boys to learn, okay. have to be mechanics, okay. to be carpenters, mm -hmm. to do things. Okay. If you arrest them and say them, if I catch you on the street, mm -hmm. I'm taking you to, to mm -hmm. prison, mm -hmm. they'll come off. Mm -hmm they will be created something to keep them busy mm -hmm. because they haven't got anything. It's mm -hmm. the government of Uganda, they did it intentionally mm -hmm. to make it so difficult. In Uganda only, mm -hmm. nobody can afford um, education unless you're rich. Okay. One child mm -hmm. who is about 10 or six years, right. that's in primary school, right. pays over 400 pounds per term. Okay. And that is minus what they need to take, mm -hmm. the mattress, okay. the beddings, right. the blah, blah, right. water. Mm. They, they've made Uganda so commercialized mm. simply because the minister of education is the wife to the president. Nepotism. So there's so many school yeah. dropouts, right. and those are the children you see yeah. from the ghetto. But the wine criticized the minister of education mm -hmm. that her education standard is questionable. Yeah. Is this something you want to comment on? Yes. Um, the, when you, um, Africa, or everywhere actually right. in the UK, right. when you study mm. as, a, in, 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 as um, a teacher, mm -hmm. you have to go for teaching practice. Right. We're asking, where did she go for teaching practice? Right. We're asking her, where is, because Bobby Wine, the president of Uganda questioned Bobby Wine's credentials, mm -hmm. and Bobby Wine produced his credentials. Okay. So we're asking the president and his wife, mm -hmm. please, because they're the... They, they are servants, mm -hmm. we pay them, mm -hmm. let them show us out their credentials. Mm -hmm. And the Minister of Education, mm -hmm. we have never seen her teach anywhere. We don't know her background in teaching mm -hmm. or in education. Mm -hmm. How does she end up being a, the Minister of Education? I've never seen anything like this. Okay. You cannot bring somebody who has no experience in health mm -hmm. to be the Minister of Health. 
It doesn't make sense. A teach, a teaching is a calling. Mm -hmm. It must be part of you. Mm -hmm. She has messed up the education system completely because they have literally made the schools private. Mm. If you can't afford a private school, you literally can't go to school. Are you guys intimidated? Because I see pictures, you can see on the screen there, people are being tortured, tormented, killed, women being stripped naked. Are you guys intimidated? Mandela said that you can break us, mm -hmm. you can kill us, but you cannot kill our spirits. As they try this, because remember President mm -hmm. Seven and his henchmen right. in 1980, when he lost the election, he went to war. They were young, just as young as we are right now. Right. They went to war and, and took power and grabbed power in 1986. Yeah. Okay. They were also as intimidated as you probably may think. Mm -hmm. But let me tell you, they can break us but they're never going to break our spirits. And if they kill one Patricia, mm. they create another hundred Patricias. When they kill one Bobby Wine, when Bobby Wine is called, there is everybody, the young, the old, everybody saying, we want the young boy, we want him. People don't care about his experience anymore. People don't care about his background. Mm -hmm. No. Okay. Ugandans are looking at somebody who has given them hope. Right. Yeah. Are you and Bobby Wine promising Ugandans that you will not turn Uganda into Gambia? Uganda is never going to turn into that because we have lived in this for such a long time. Mm -hmm. We have seen what is happening. This is why we want a peaceful transition. Mm -hmm. We want to vote Bobby White into power. Okay. If we start nonsense, we chuck him up. Okay. Uganda must have term limits. Okay. Kenya has developed because they have term limits. Okay. Tanzania has term limits. Mm -hmm. Ghana has got term limits. Yes. Why can't Uganda have term limits? Right. At least if we take a nonsense from one person at least for five years, mm -hmm. we're sure that we chuck that person out and start somebody else. I understand. And there is accountability. Right. But remember, if somebody has no accountability, right. like President Museveni, who calls all my oil, my Uganda, mm -hmm. I didn't fight for nothing, mm -hmm. there is no accountability. Mm -hmm. He's stealing the country clean. Mm -hmm. And he, he cannot explain to you mm -hmm. how everything got where. For mm. him, all he stands and, and speaks it. We fought and he talks about the past and blah, blah. Mm. He's telling Ugandans today that I'm, I'm going to secure your future. Mm. How can you secure somebody's future when you don't even know their present? Good question. Very good question. Ghana had a very peaceful election recently, on the 7th of December, precisely. I followed it. And um, I'm sure you followed it all well. Mm. Are you going to have a peaceful election without any interference of rigging? I highly doubt. Of course, President said we know that he's going to rig. All right. Everybody knows that because he's the, it, actually the ballot papers have already come in. Okay. And I know why they did this very quickly so that he can find a way of rigging. And we, ha we don't have much time. Okay. We know that he's going to rig. Okay. We know all these tricks. Mm -hmm. But like I told you, mm -hmm. the power of the people is going to prevail. What will happen if he does rig the election? We have already our plan. Mm -hmm. We have told everybody when you um, go into the ballot, mm -hmm. please stick your ballot, mm -hmm. stick there. Mm -hmm. And we shall start, um, we're going to count. We have to make sure that we know mm -hmm. by the time, for example, if you're, if, if you're, you're the presiding officer yeah. here, yeah. or you're the one um, looking after our votes, we have to make sure that you're counting. And we know, and the people themselves, the voters, because must, Ugandans must understand for starters that they need to be part of this process. Okay. The change is not for Bobby Wine. Okay. The change is not for Patricia. The okay. change is for every single Ugandan. Okay. So we are calling upon every single Ugandan that after voting, mm -hmm. don't leave your vote mm -hmm. hanging. Stay mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. Look after it. Mm -hmm. And then let us have our comparison. Mm -hmm. And then that is going to be a story for another day. Museveni went to war mm -hmm. because they rigged mm -hmm. his uh, um, election okay. in 1981. Right. 1981 or 80. One of them. He went to war. Right. What makes him think that he can't go to war? Are you willing to go to war? If By it does happen. Bullet or the ballot Museveni must go, and we are not intimidated anymore. Bobby Wine stated in one of his interviews on Nigeria that Ugandans will rise. It's not a 
question of could, he said, Ugandans will rise if the odd happens. Yeah. Is that the case? Yeah, they will. Recently, Bobby Wayne was arrested. Right. And Uganda rose. People were upside down mm. in two days. Mm. By the time the government killed people, they killed about 100 people. Ugandans were on, on, on fire. Uganda was catching fire. Because Museven has pushed the Ugandans so much, mm-hmm. Museven thought that by not giving these young boys and girls mm-hmm. education, mm-hmm. he's making himself a favor. Mm-hmm. Uganda is a mess. People mm-hmm. drink from 6 a.m. to 6 a.m. 5 a.m. I've never seen a government that allows such wahala to happen. Mm-hmm. People are just, there is not everybody's doing whatever they like. So he didn't realize that those same people, mm-hmm. he left not to have education. He failed to help um, in the process of, in, 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 uh, because, look, mm-hmm. Museveni is 75. Right. The vice president is, I think, 80. <laughs> the prime minister is 70-something. Mm-hmm. All the ministers, elite ministers of Otafile, there's so many. I, I can't even count them. Mm-hmm. I, I have, like, so many. And they all say we fought. We fought. They cannot even give way to younger people. Now it's the younger people who are going to exactly put them down because we are the many. They, they, um, it's almost 70% of Ugandans. Number one, they're useless, uh, they're jobless, and they're youth. And they all want change because they keep on telling them we fought, but we didn't see them fight. We don't right. even know why they fought. Okay. So it's none of our business. You were recently arrested. Mm. What happened? Because um, it is a way of intimidation. President Seven uses intimidation. He has done this in the past to so many political opposition. He mm-hmm. just beats them up because he feels that Uganda is his personal property. Okay. In January, when I was in Uganda, because of course, if somebody wants to become a president, has got to do consultations. Okay. So we were doing our um, district consultations okay. and we, we were stopped. Right from the beginning, people were arrested. After literally, we didn't even get far. So uh, Bobby Wine and his team was arrested. I was arrested in Lira, and today they're arresting people every single day using COVID nineteen. Remember that in July, COVID nineteen. Yes, the pandemic is there, and we do appreciate that. And people were totally scared, but because of the seven is double standards. They did the um, uh, NRM primaries, okay. and they they lined up behind everyone, and people saw. So the people who were actually scared, they realized that, wait a minute, mm-hmm. so much money, over 60 billion was passed as a supplementary budget for COVID-19 in the parliament to buy masks for Ugandans. That money disappeared in thin air. Billions of money was passed mm-hmm. to give Ugandans food. That went in, into thin air. Mm. President Museveni said we're going to have a, a scientific election. And he said he's buying radios for every single person. We have not received the radios. So he's using COVID-19 to say that, oh, actually, we're beating up Bobby Wine's people because they're spreading COVID-19. Mm. But then President Museveni, on the contrary, his, his team is moving around and campaigning and nobody's beating them up. So it's, he's trying to intimidate Ugandans. He's trying to make them lose their energy. Last night, Bobby Wan slept on the streets in Kitugumu simply because, oh, we don't want him to come and campaign. The RDC said, I don't want him in, in my district. But this is not their personal property. It is not the owner. He's not the owner. And now they arrested them for nine hours straight. Because they're saying that was not an arrest, but what, what can I call it? Because they were put somewhere, they couldn't move, they were not allowed to access mm-hmm. anybody, they couldn't speak to the lawyer, they were put somewhere. Is okay. that more or less an arrest? Until Bobby Wan had to sleep on the street. And that is what has been happening. Over 100 people have been killed, mm-hmm. protect them, protecting them from COVID-19, but rather killed with a gun. Mm-hmm. But when you look at the statistics, on the internet, Uganda has lost 205 people of COVID-19. Mm-hmm. It's, isn't that weird? Mm-hmm. Because we started the COVID-19 mm-hmm. saga mm-hmm. around February. Mm-hmm. Only 205 people mm-hmm. 
mm-hmm. have died. Mm-hmm. A hundred people have been killed by the government trying to protect them from COVID-19. It doesn't, make sense. It, doesn't make sense. it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Your brother yes. is an MP. Yes. Okay, he's member of parliament. Uh, what is what is he doing to support Bobby Wine? My brother is uh, Joseph Sewungu. He's the MP of Kalungu uh, West. Mm-hmm. He's a member of the NUP. He was they're, they're one of the senior politicians mm-hmm. who have been politicians for a little while. Mm-hmm. He's doing his, um, hopefully, if he goes through, he'll have done a third term, mm-hmm. which I hope he doesn't even come back there after. Mm-hmm. And so... You hope he doesn't come It back. doesn't after the third term. Okay. We need to give the young ones a chance, a chance okay. to take over as well. So my brother are one of those people who are in the structures. Mm. Of course, Bobby Wine has got to be sold in each and every district, in each and every area. Mm. And of course, the meetings at the back going on and the structures for NUP because people power transited from being people power to a, a political party, which is NUP. Mm. So of course, they need Bobby Wine needs support of mm. elder politicians mm-hmm. to tell him what's going on, how to do it. NUP is so organized, and this is what is confusing Museveni. Mm-hmm. He's thinking, where does this boy get the wisdom? Mm-hmm. He's getting the wisdom from those senior politicians. Mm-hmm. They decided to throw it down. You see, as you can see, my book is in green. Mm-hmm. I come from a very strong DP background. That's called the De- Democratic Party. But we decided that regardless of what happens, mm-hmm. We're going to have to put our personal parties on the side at the moment, liberate Uganda, then we'll talk about it the next day. So my brother is one of those people in the background doing a lot of work. And of course, he's campaigning. They're looking for votes everywhere because we needed the entire Uganda. As you can see, when you see those people being beaten, somebody who has no gun, they've surrendered, put their arms up. Why this man with a gun? Holding his trousers, another one with a bow and arrow, another one with sticks, um, trying to whip him, like um, beating him up. Just one man, one, two, three, four, five, with guns. These proportions, of course. Yeah, they're trying to intimidate Ugandans. You see this guy, all he's holding is a flag of Uganda. These people is UPDF. And they have our uniform. And they're arresting somebody who is holding the flag of Uganda in that manner. What picture does it sell Uganda? He wants to do business with Uganda. This is the picture. Look at this poor woman. She's being held by so many people. This woman has no gun. They have guns. A presidential candidate, for example, Bobby Wine, if he has done something wrong, mm-hmm. he can be someone. Yeah. He's been summoned to the Electoral Commission on Monday. Mm-hmm. Why do they have to hold him and manhandle him and beat him up and kill him? Mm-hmm. Let them summon him. Yeah. I'm sure. You, you see, this is all intimidation. Mm-hmm. Intimidation because they're trying to say to Uganda, you don't have the guns. The president has said it countless times. We are the masters of violence. What are your aspirations for Ugandans? Now, come January, mm. you will go to the parliament. Let's assume you win this election. What are you going to do for Uganda? First of all, we need reconciliation. Okay. Because there's been so many things. Okay. That is the number one. We need reconciliation. We need to start from scratch. We right. need to, first of all, see what is the strength of Uganda. What mm-hmm. do we have? Mm-hmm. And what do, where should we use? Right. Because, of course, they think the army belongs to the president, mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. And that's not what we need. Mm-hmm. We need, first of all, to have a conversation as Ugandan mm-hmm. to start with reconciliation. Okay. Then we need to understand where did we go wrong? Okay. And what is needed? What is there? Mm-hmm. Because Bobby Wan has been asked, in your first 100 days, mm. there's certain things that need to be scrapped. Yeah. Uganda has been broken so mm. badly. Uganda, we have 460 MPs. And those 460 MPs, almost everyone takes home 10K a month. That's a lot of money. Okay. We have, how many ministers do we have? They have cars. They have people looking after them. Um, uh, whatever the help, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and protection, and, protection. Yeah. all that is a waste. So we need to first of all bring back Uganda. Okay. And because Uganda, remember, also has 
46 tribes. Okay. So we need to, first of all, reconcile and put aside, because as we are the young people, we don't know anything about tribes. Mm -hmm. We're not tribalistic. Okay. So we need to, first of all, bring Uganda together. All right. Then we take it from there. Are you going to sign any peace pact to protect Museveni? Is that one of the or possible conditions that will probably, you know, but we're going to say it very clearly. Right. He wants a peaceful transition. Right. He is happy to reconcile and let Mr. Seven rest. Okay. That is, if he's willing to rest peacefully. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, he's not. Mm -hmm. So he's putting us in a, in a predicament where we don't know what to do with him. Okay. If Mr. Seven allows, mm -hmm. okay, I've lost the board. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go back to my house. Yes, we are. Ugandans are very peaceful people. We want a peaceful transition. We want to be able to sit with Museveni and advise us. Look, young man, here you're doing something wrong. Because, of course, New Broom Street clean, but all the ones know all corners. So we cannot dispute that Museveni has something probably he could bring. But we need to know if he's willing. Okay. But because he's a trickster, he's a liar, he's a, he's a mess. Okay. He's not going to allow that. Okay. So that is a story for another day as well. Okay. If you have the opportunity to meet him now, what would you tell him? Tell him now. I want to tell you, President Museveni, that Ugandans have given you a chance. Mm -hmm. Ugandans loved you for so long. Mm -hmm. Do not please embarrass yourself. Go home, look after your cows, look after your grandchildren. Enough is enough. You said it in your own book that after 75, a president has lost the vigor and he cannot carry on. So please, we're asking you, why don't you let Uganda have a peaceful transition? If only, only other countries are now having peaceful transitions. Right. Right. Uganda is the only way right. we've never had a peaceful transition. So please, Mr. Amsevin, if you say, as you always say that you love Uganda so right. much, allow a peaceful transition. If you love Uganda so much, allow a peaceful transition. And this is a book, a piece of cake. That's the author, Patricia Sewungo. Grab a copy now. Is it on Amazon as well? It's on Amazon. It's a lovely piece of book, and you should all grab a copy. Okay? Ugandans, grab a copy. And remember when you go to the poll, remember to you vote. You have to vote. You have to Bobby vote. Wine, um, and it's not Bobby Wine, it's Robert Chandler and Sentamu. Our, our um, sign is a, an umbrella. Okay. Tick. Please make sure that your tick stays in the box. Right. And after you voted, stay there and look after your vote. Peaceful transition is going to prevail. Just like Michelle Obama said, <laughs> vote like there is no other thing than, than this. Okay. So protect yourself in this um, bio science. Yes. Okay. Patricia, it's been a pleasure meeting you and speaking with you. I hope to speak to you after the election and I'm willing to come to Uganda. Thank you. Once uh, Bobby Wine is elected and you become a minister. And do not forget no. to also probably contest for the MP seat. Yes. In Masaka, is it? Yes. Is it Masaka? Yes, in Masaka. Uh, where is it when, next year? Next year, 2026. 2026. Yeah. I'm sure Bobby Wine will put you in any position. Which position do you think you'll be? I want them. to be, uh, it's funny, my friends keep on finding it very funny, yeah. but I want, I, I, I have a passion for women, Okay. so there is a minister that I look at and I keep on saying that I want her position, I see. because they've done nothing for women, they've done nothing what for women. What position is that? It's not actually when I'm coming. <laughs> well. Well, Patricia, thank you for coming. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's an honor to meet you, and I hope to see you very soon. All right? This is the hour show. This is where time will bring us. Remember to subscribe on our YouTube, Facebook, and follow us on Twitter and on Instagram. I'd like to thank our proud sponsors and D Legal and Immigration Associates. If you need any legal assistance, do contact us. If you are looking for a good water to quench that thirst, if you are in Ghana, then Drink no other water than Andes Natural Mineral Water. If you're looking for a plot of land to buy, to build that dream house, contact Roma Villa Estates, and you'll get an affordable land in Ghana. Thank you very much, all. And sticking with us, take good care of yourself and each other. This is the Hour Show, and I would like to say a big thank you to you all. Once again, have a good day, and goodbye. <laughs>